I'm Robin Clevett. Thanks for joining me on Skill Builder. I'm on the Capal Build. Now, if you've seen in a previous video, I've been hanging my doors, which is quite exciting. Uh, they're pre-finished walnut doors. They're from XL Joinery. I went for these doors because they're totally unusual. They're really well made. Now, I'm at the point where I'm gonna take this pair and make them into these pocket door frames which I installed during the first fix stage. I've got it all set up. I'm gonna get on now and take you through the whole process. So I'm gonna remove my temporary doors. I've set these up right when I did the first fix just to make sure everything works. I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna transfer the brackets onto the tops of the doors. They are fairly easy to do. The only thing is the SIM kit, the SIM kit on these doors is a wire and it's got a tensioning bolt and they're particularly fiddly. You can't get spanners in that easily. So what I'm going to do is put some tying wire between the two hooks, tie it off, then I'm gonna release the SIM kit so it's not gonna go twang like that. Right, the SIM kit is a simultaneous kit, isn't it? Yes, so the SIM kit is basically no more than a wire which goes through the runners and it means that they can both operate together like so. I know people in the past have used them and they've cursed them and they've just cut them out and pulled the wires out and used them on their own. Some of the more expensive pocket door systems on the market have a better SIM kit than these. But I actually like this system. It's, um, it's good, cost effective and um, you know, got a Okay, lot so do. the alternative would be to open them individually. Yeah. And if you did that, you could open one side, leaving the other side closed. Exactly, exactly. So that's an advantage. So um, yeah, so the SIM kit just means that simply they both run in together. And you know, if you leave them like halfway, that one's exactly halfway. So if you only want it open one door width or a little bit, voila. So I'm gonna take these out, transfer them onto the doors, put the brackets in, and then we'll get them in. Slightly smaller pliers. Yeah. Fiddly this. Right, so I'll just take out my temporary door set up here and put that on top of here gently. And that's what I'm gonna transfer. Take the other one off. There's the SIM kit with, a, with the hell held there. The other thing about the SIM kit, it runs into this side as well. So we have to get the, the small ferrule out. This is a little bit fiddly. And we'll run that one into here like that. That's it, we're gonna transfer them over now. The handy thing about these little brackets is they've got a tiny little bit of metal which is bent round, so you can actually get them where you want them. I mean, I'm only sighting them in centre, and then you can give them a little push, and they sort of almost secure themselves. Centre a bit, do two screws. <clears throat> now what we're fixing into here is a solid walnut lipping in the top, which is about 12 mil, and the core of these doors, like most doors is a really compressed chipboard so they're solid cord all the way through similar to a fire door so it's pretty important that this lipping here is going to do most of the work so this pilot bit is quite tight these screws will cut into that walnut quite nicely they're not going to split it once you get through that walnut it's lovely and you really don't want to make those holes too big because all of the weight is hanging on those eight screws. So let's do a little calculation. If the door is 40 kilos, it's a little bit less than 40 kilos, it's more like about 30. Divide that by eight screws and actually you can see that they're only taking four or five kilos per screw. So even if you had only 
probably three good fixings on each bracket is going to easily do the work. It's quite often worth doing that when you're doing any kind of fixing. Divide the weight by the number of fixings and you can see just how, how much it's actually doing. This method of setting out means that you can do it all once when you're doing it, putting it all together. It saves a bit of time now. So the idea is I'm going to carefully manoeuvre this into place to get the brackets back on and also the little ferrule here which is actually the restrainer for the sim kit so this is what pulls both doors and because the bracket has a hole in either side so it's sort of like that we need to twist it on so this is the door I need to do first the other one's just a matter of re-hooking afterwards so I shall ease that in I've got it on a really handy door stand an airbag under there to do two things, jack it up and protect it as I slide it. So we're just going to ease that over. It's a little bit of a tight fit. It's intended to be parallel. There we go. That's that in place. We don't want to get our wires crossed, do we? That's the inside wire. Delegating is key, isn't it? Yeah. Always have the same dream that the plane is now on the road. Yeah. And the uh, it's coming to country lanes, and the winds are going to be too wide for them. Yeah. And then they start hitting the trees, and oh, always have the same dream. I don't know what it means. Hold it taut, Roger. What do you want to do? Just hold it sort of taut and up. Oh, that's sexual. If you need it, tell me. If you yeah. need a hand. We're doing the, the pocket doors into the lounge, uh, snug. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, sweetie. All right, Dad. Have a good rest of the day. All right, hon. I'll speak to you in a while. So I've managed to reconnect the SIM kit. It was a little bit of a nervous moment because you have to kind of keep the tension on. It has got a ferrule which is keeping it all parallel and true but these cables basically run around the runner. The runner is in a shroud but the shroud has a gap around it and if you're not careful and you let them swing into there and you can't get them back out or if they pull out of the shroud basically guys you've got to take the doors back out, unscrew the track, take the track out and fiddle around with it again so it's something you really need to um, take a bit of care and caution over it. So it was a little bit of a nervous moment, but it is on there now. All I'm gonna do is fine tune the tightening nuts, the leveling nuts, make sure it closes. And also, because of the point of fixing of these doors, you've only got to be a mil in or out on the nut when you're tightening it back up and it will throw the bottom of the doors out. So we need to kind of fiddle with it for a little bit as well to get those right. And the, the idea is, of course, when they pull through, they're going to meet nicely, nice and true, and they're going to hang perfectly plumb. So I can see this one here, just needs adjusting to get it flush there. So that way and that way, a little bit of faffing, but we can do it. We should be in business. And then you've got to think about the handles, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's right, I've got to make a little um, Jig up. routing template for them. So that's the doors in, they're all tightened up, braced off. So the next job is to run my trims or my architraves and little linings around with the gasket. 
But to save you sitting there watching it for ages, come and have a look at one I've finished already. So this is a single pocket door, but it's exactly the same principle. The same architrave as everywhere else, except I've made a small lining out of the same material. I've kept the painted side in, so it never has to be cut in. This one will obviously be re-primed. These are only in primer. And there's where I was talking about putting the four screws in, which are screwed through into the metal stud, mm -hmm. which holds it all. And the door fits nice and flush in that lining when it's open. And then it's got just an air gas, like a little brush gasket. And that's it. Right, can I just ask you, yeah. you, you're going to screw those architraves on, you're saying that at some point in the future, if anything goes wrong, you might need to take those architraves off. Yeah. So you're going to fill over the screw heads. Yeah, fill them, fill them over. And if, say, you know, you're going to get a bit of senile dementia, obviously, you know, forget like... Forget so, where they were. Forget where they were. So how do you know where they are? I just use a magnet. Okay. So I just run a magnet over and I'll find that screw and I'll just put a little knife in and scrape it out. And that's it. So um, a simple trick. In fact, that's a useful trick if you're taking off old architraves or if you're taking out a door lining you want to reuse or a door frame, just get a magnet and it will, ah, oh, there's some metal there, take it out. It's a good little tip. So yeah, that's basically how it works. It's all very nice and nice bit of friction there. And this, you can just see I've got a small self-adhesive brown gasket which matches the door. And I just think it's really pleasing. So here we have it. There's our trims we made from two pieces of architrave. And it really finishes it off. And we have a little self-adhesive brown brush gasket inside. If I open it up, you'll be able to see both sides is the gasket. And it all just operates really nicely. And this is the brush on the top. Come back and check us out soon. Thanks for watching us. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and support the skill builder journey.